What's happening, friends? Welcome back to Dynamo DeFi. My name is Patrick, and on this channel, I talk about cryptocurrency, decentralized finance, and economics. Today's video is about the Juno Network. Juno is an exciting project that is bringing smart contracts to the Cosmos ecosystem. Now, before I go any further, I want to state, of course, that this video is intended for informational research purposes only. I think Juno is a very exciting project, but nothing I say in this video is suggesting that you should or should not invest in it. I'm, I'm simply telling you my research so you can uh, do your own. With that being said, though, I think Juno is pretty cool. So today I'll go through what exactly it is, what are some of the projects that are launching on it, and then what are some of the risks that I see with Juno, because it's always good to talk about those as well. So first, let's talk a bit about what Juno is. Uh, and here on their website, you can see a lot of big words here. So we see cross-chain smart contracts, we see it's decentralized, we see public permissionless, and we see interoperable applications. So I'll try to break those down one at a time. For smart contracts, uh, that is, of course, you know, what you'd use in DeFi, NFTs, uh, like, like any other layer one. So... Uh, that, you know, that should be straightforward, but what makes Juno unique in that respect is that it's built on top of Cosmos, and Cosmos actually doesn't have sort of comprehensive smart contracts itself. Cosmos is a system for other people to build blockchains on it, but not anyone can, can just uh, whip up a smart contract or whip up a dApp and deploy it to Cosmos. Instead, you would deploy it to a blockchain that's built on top of Cosmos. And, uh, you know, if you're not familiar with how Cosmos works... Basically, it's a communication protocol for people to build different blockchains that communicate with each other and interact with each other. Uh, it's, it's pretty powerful. It's pretty powerful, uh, but, but smart contracts aren't its, aren't its thing. Some of the projects that are built on Cosmos you might recognize, like Terra, Kronos, Secret Network, uh, and there's a lot more. Osmosis, we talk about a lot on this channel. Uh, there's, there's a lot more built on it. But what makes... Uh, what makes Juno different than some of those other ones is many of those networks like Osmosis or Akash Network don't have permissionless smart contracts. So Osmosis, not anyone can build uh, an application on the Osmosis chain. You need permission from the validators to do that. But on Juno, anyone can build an application. And so it's sort of a uh, more of a standard blockchain. Uh, what also makes it unique is that these smart contracts on Juno are interoperable and cross-chain. So those two kind of go together. Meaning that you could build an application on Juno that interacted with one of the other chains built on Cosmos. So you could have something happen on Juno that triggered something to be transferred across the uh, IBC that connects these blockchains and then, and then uh, happen and then do something on the other chain, which is pretty powerful and really, you know, turns Cosmos rather from a uh, collection of somewhat connected blockchains into more of a comprehensive ecosystem and puts Juno near the nexus of that. Final thing that I want to call out is that it's decentralized. Uh, the launch of this was extremely community-driven. This project really came up through the community. It didn't have a lot of major backers. And, uh, and the distribution of tokens was, I think, very fair. Right, it, A lot of them were, a good chunk of them were airdropped to Cosmos stakers. So they really did a good effort to, to get ownership of the network out there into the community. So that's what Juno is in a nutshell. I have a longer video about it that I'll link in the description as well. But, uh, but since, since Juno just launched, there aren't a lot of applications yet, but there are several that are preparing to go live in the near future. First one is Juno Swap. This is going to be the DEX on Juno, and it's not clear if they'll have their own token yet. They've applied to have funding from the community pool, which would be in the form of Juno Incentives. Yeah, but but Juno Swap is the upcoming DEX, and you can see it's not fully live. There's zero zero dollars in liquidity, but uh, I believe that originally they were scheduled to go live before Christmas, which would be in the next three days. Again, remember smart contracts only went live on Juno one week ago, but but even if not, then I would expect them to go live pretty soon. Next one is Juno Mint, and I haven't really seen a project like this on other networks. Juno Mint is a a uh, application that will allow people to easily craft their own digital assets on Juno. So if you wanted to make some sort of token, you'd be able to easily do that using Juno Mint. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, it's still testing. They, they don't have a, their websites under maintenance, so you can't see it. I wish I had gotten a chance to test it before they went into maintenance. But, uh, 
But, but I think that could be pretty powerful because potentially this could make it so that anyone could easily make some sort of community token and distribute it. And you wouldn't necessarily need to be as, you know, in the terminal on, on, on the computer doing as much coding. Uh, and, and, and one thing that I think goes with goes along with this is that Juno is very focused on building tools for builders and developers. And we'll talk a bit more in a second about, you know, that's positive and negative. I think it's mostly positive. But, uh, but, but they're really doing a lot to make this network as attractive for people building projects as they can. Along those lines, another project is the DAO DAO. So it's a DAO that builds tooling to help other people build DAOs. So decentralized autonomous organizations are one of the big new things in cryptocurrency where rather than uh, having you know a sort of legal structure that's owning something, you have it owned by the community, community ownership generally being represented by ownership of a token or NFT. And, uh, and then they can vote on changes to make, they can, you know, as a community work together to advance the network in different ways. Uh, but, but it's, it's very much a very early stage. So, so a tool, a DAO that built tooling for other DAOs, you know, that's pretty cool. Next one is Strange Clan. Strange Clan is a game built on Cosmos, uh, and their NFTs will actually be traded on Juno. So there's an NFT marketplace being built on Juno as well, and they already have a game lined up that's going to trade their NFTs there. Uh, so th those are the main projects looking uh, that I've seen that are launching already. Yeah, I'm sure there are others that are in development that I didn't hear about or that aren't public. Uh, they also have a hackathon that is kicking off soon. And they allocated $14 million of Juno. Uh, and that Juno is going to go to funding various develop development. Uh, so they want interchain contracts. That's what we talked about as far as having contracts that interact with with other chains. I think that's going to be huge. I mean, nothing like that exists in cryptocurrency right now. Uh, they have DeFi, of course. You know, this is a DeFi channel, so so very interested in that, and, and I'll be following those projects. They have NFTs, DAOs, uh, like I just mentioned, games, privacy, community expansion. So this is more for people who are building educational content, uh, and then other, other tools for interacting with smart contracts and uploading smart contracts. Again, they're very focused on building things for developers. And $14 million might not seem like a huge sum, but consider that the total market cap of Juno, and it's no, tough to know the exact market cap because, because, uh, because the circulating supply is you know, changing day by day, but uh, the total market cap is probably somewhere around $300 million. Maybe a bit under, maybe a bit over. But, uh, but $14 million is actually a really large percentage for that, right? That's probably, what, 5%? Roughly, so uh, so that that is that is a very very high percentage, and I and I think that that this is going to lead to some cool stuff. They definitely have a lot of developers who are interested already. So that's the nuts and bolts of Juno. Uh, like I said before, I'll talk about some of the risks as well. Uh, one of the great things is they're recruiting a lot of developers, but one of the risks I see is they're not very focused on marketing and finding users. I think. Their thought is if they build it, people will come, right? So they'll get developers to build stuff, and then that will attract people. And that may just work, right? You know, if people can build a lot of awesome applications, it might attract people. But uh, but but that is a risk I see that that uh, you know there's lots of lots of chains that are building things, but, but don't have many people using them. So so that is a risk. Uh, the other risk is, of course, that it's early. Any project that that's this early that doesn't have a lot of applications on it, you know, there's no guarantee that it takes off. As cool as it is, as talented as the team is, nothing is certain, especially in cryptocurrency. So, so, so that is something you have to keep in mind. And then uh, finally, it's not in any exchanges right now. So onboarding is quite difficult. Uh, you need to be familiar with Cosmos ecosystem. You have to prop buy a, a token that's on Cosmos, probably Atom, maybe Luna. Then you have to do a cross-chain transfer to Osmosis. Then you have to exchange it for Juno. So that's, that, that's a major challenge I see right now just because in order to get mass adoption, you know, there's probably somewhere in the tens of thousands of people who would be kind of savvy enough to, to do that right now in order to get hundreds of thousands of users, either Cosmos needs to get a lot more people or there has to be an easier way to onboard to Juno. Um, but all that being said, it's still, I think, a really cool project. And, and I'll be honest, I've been compounding my rewards from providing liquidity on Osmosis into Juno for about two months now. So, so that's been where my rewards have been going. Let me know what you guys think about Juno in the comments. As always, if there are other projects you want me to review, be sure to drop a request down below. 
And if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter. That's all I got. Till next time, this is Dynamo DeFi.